Hey, everybody. What Good morning, Doug. I'm sorry, I'm running late. Give me a sec just to get myself organized here. Let's go through the list. Christian. Hey, Doug, I'm here. Hello. Eric. Good morning. Hello, John. Good morning. Okay. And Olag. Or Olag. I'm here. Hello. Uh, Ginger. Miss Ginger. I'm here. Sorry. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a rough morning already. <laughs> tell me about it. You're going to have to leave any phone calls I've had. All right. Um, Nick. Hey, Doug. Hello. Hello. Um, I, know, I lost myself. Remy. Hey, guys. Hello. Uh, Brian, are you there? Brian Young? Yes, I am, as soon as I can figure out how to unmute. Thank you. <laughs> it's always a challenge, yes. Another person has problems with mute. Scott, are you there? Doug, Doug, Doug. Doug, 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 yes. And Francesco. Hello. Hello. Tommy. Hey. Hello, Vinay. Hey, Doug. Good morning. Hello. Morning. Vishnu, are you there? If I could spell Vishnu. Vishnu, are you there? All right. What about Vlad? I'm here. Hey. Hello. Hey, it's been a while. How's it? How you doing? Fine. Fine. Quarantine. <laughs> All right. Mark, are you there? Mark Fisher. Yes, I am here. Hello. All right. Mike, are you there? Present. Present, so official. I love it. Lance. Yes, I'm here. All right. Did I miss anybody? How about Vishnu? Are you there yet? All right. I'm all caught up. Did I miss anybody? I know we're going to miss quite a few people today because of vacation in Europe. All right, give another minute or so, then we'll get started. <clears throat> How's everybody doing today? Hanging in there. <laughs> Uh, so, Ginger, you're in the West Coast, right? No, I'm in Austin, Texas. Oh, Austin. How, how are you guys doing in terms of like opening back up? Just curious. Um, it depends on what opinion you would like. Uh, no, 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 I'm at, <laughs> not asking whether it's going well or good. I'm just curious, are, are they starting oh. to open up at all? Oh, yes. Um, Austin opened, uh, did a partial open two weeks ago, and then mm -hmm. every week they open new stuff. Um, regretfully in my opinion uh tomorrow they open everything so all bars uh tattoo parlors massage places like all of that high population close contact stuff will be opening so interesting all right interesting okay yeah, we're, yeah i think we're i think we're a little slower here in north carolina so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out i'd prefer to be slower so i'm just gonna stay home probably for the rest of my life <laughs> That is an option. Is we are lucky that in our in our line of work we can work from home if our company lets us. So that's that's good. Yeah. All right. It's it's oh it's four after. We're way behind. Sorry for that diversion. All right. Um, all right. Uh, nothing for AIs. Okay. Community time. Anything from the community people want to bring up? All right. Uh, not hearing anything. Oh. Not sure. Should I say it here? But later in the SDK call, I'm gonna do a quick demo of SDK Rust. Somebody's interested. So if you're interested in seeing the Rust demo, join that first five minutes, but it should be interesting. So if you're interested, please join. All right. Um, <laughs> so the SIG update, this is interesting. So uh, I think last week I mentioned that the TOC seemed like they were more in favor of us creating a, a SIG as opposed to just being a work group under SIG app delivery. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm starting to get the sense now that maybe that's not true, or at least one of the people on the TOC definitely does not think we should go that path. They want us to remain a working group. Um, so I basically said, 
we don't care. Whatever you guys want, just let us know. Because um, I don't want to get into an endless wordsmithing to try to define uh, serverless so that it differentiates us enough from SIG app delivery, because in my opinion, it's all the same thing. So we're going to let them decide. And I don't know what their decision is yet. I'm going to lean on the TOC to make that decision for us. We just don't give a crap to be blunt about it. So it's still up in the air, just let you guys know. Um, all right, moving forward though. Uh, there is an SDK call after this one. Uh, if we end early, we will start that early. So uh, be prepared for that. Um, let's see, I don't see Timur on the call, so I don't think there's anything to update there other than keep in mind, they do have their own repo now. I did manage to convince the powers that be to give the workflow group their own repo so that they can move their stuff out of the serverless uh, GitHub repo because they felt a little bit like they were uh, being shortchanged by being just a folder under that repo. And they wanted to be, they wanted to be able to advertise themselves a little bit more and point to a folder wasn't quite as nice as a full blown repo. So I did manage to get them a repo and they are still trying to figure out the process for becoming a sandbox project. And we'll see how that plays out. But I think that's the only thing worth mentioning going on there. Um, any questions about anything we've talked about up till now? Okay. Now, um, it was noticed that the master or head versions of our documentation all say V1.0. And while a lot of them haven't changed, for some things they actually have, and that's a little misleading because technically they're in the process of becoming maybe a version 1.01 at some point. Um, whatever, the, whatever the thing is, um, it's not technically 1.0. So we should probably name them something different at the head level. Um, in the past, we've named it V, whatever the next version is going to be, dash RC1, um, just to make it clear that it's not, it's a candidate, it's not official, it's just a work in progress. Um, so I was thinking of doing the same thing here, and for now, calling it V0.1 dash RC1, we could also use dash WIP, meaning work in progress. I don't have a strong preference, but I figured I need to get input from you guys to see whether you care one way or the other. Anybody on the call have a preference for which way we go in terms of this? But I do think we need to name it something. Well, RC has a pretty distinct meaning in the HA community. It basically means you're, this is pretty much a release unless you find something and will fix it before the actual release. So, so in other words, what I'm saying is a work in progress and RC are two radically different things. So it sounds like you're leaning a little towards more, more towards WIP, right? That would be based on your description. That would be my opinion. Okay. Uh, shouldn't we use 1.x because you don't know if it's going to be minor patch or? That's a good point too. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Thank you, Vlad, for the plus one. I agree with both of those points. Okay. Anybody have any other alternative they want us to consider? Okay. I'm going to make it a formal ask then. Is there any objection then to uh, appending? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I probably misspoke. Like one point X, not one point oh, zero point X. Correct. Sorry, I did miss that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any objection then to heading down that path? Okay. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Um, all right. Before we jump into PRs and issues, uh, is there any other topic that we need to bring up? Okay, just want to make sure I can run out of time. All right, so as promised, uh, Clemens sent in his proposal for the schema registry. And I see, oh good, there are already some comments in there. I haven't had a chance to look at it myself, but he did at least do what he promised. Now, because he just sent this in yesterday, uh, it's too soon for us to officially vote on whether we merge it or not. Um, and unfortunately, with him not being on the call, he's not here to take any questions. Um, but for posterity in the recording, anybody have any comments or questions that Maybe someone else in the group might be able to answer. Uh, can you paste the link on the chat window? So yes, I can. Do, 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 do. There you go. Okay. And as I said, obviously, we don't need to do anything with it right now. This is I'm just bringing this up more for you guys, FYI, so that everybody can take a look at it. And hopefully, on next week's call, we'll either discuss it or vote to approve it as a you know, working draft that should be merged and people can then do PRs and issues against. Okay, any comments, commentary? All right, moving forward then. <clears throat> okay, um, tell you what, 
let me do this. Jim, I just noticed you joined the call. Since we can't vote on this since you just added yesterday, let me give you a chance just to introduce this issue, uh, or PR, I should say, um, just so people are aware of it and can review it for next week. Yeah, this is one of the dangers, I guess, of sitting at home twiddling my thumbs and wondering what to do. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, we had the proto buff um, or a proto buff. Um, suggestion um, and we yanked it just before v1 i can't remember exactly why we did that um but it, it got yanked um and as i hadn't seen anything coming back i thought i would take a crack at um creating you know um, a version of that um i've i've basically taken an approach i don't know if you want to go to the the schema file um uh, it sort of fully encapsulates um, a proto buff representation of a cloud event. Um, so it allows for you know, a set of attributes um, and then a distinct um, you know, payload. Um, one of those payloads could be a proto buff object itself. You know, so much like in JSON, you allow the, um, the body to be a JSON document this allows it to transport um, a protobuf object as, uh, if, if they want it. Um, I took the approach of um, defining the attributes in terms of you know, the cloud event um, attribute types or our type system. Um, so using this model, I believe we can carry or represent any you know, type uh, that uh, you know that we want um, within our type system. The only thing I haven't done, um, and, and this was, I, I think, where I'm looking for um, guidance, is um, I took the stance of of just defining all the attributes as a map, um, rather than calling out individual property fields for like the spec version and the type. Those sort of um, required fields. Um, I'm, I'm still mentally on the fence, to be honest, as to whether you know this is a simpler model um, or a more complex model. Um, but I was really putting it up there for for comment. Okay, uh, Francesco, your hands up. Yeah. So uh, I'll tell to you that I have a really, really little knowledge of protobuf, but. Uh, what I see here that I don't understand, honestly, and again, that could be because of my little knowledge about protobuf, is why you did one-off on the data. I mean, th this was, I think, in the event format, in the JSON event format, this was originally done to make it easier to read the code event when it, when, it, when it sent in structural mode. But in that case, you already send the protobuf as a binary. So what is the reason behind doing data one-off so you mean a one-off in terms is it a byte stream yeah stream, i mean you can just send yeah. yes what i mean is that you can just send you can just say that data is just bytes and that's all right but i mean much like i, I guess my argument would be in json we allow a json object to be natively inside the data payload yeah um so um certainly from a protobuf perspective i can just natively put um, a proto object in the payload as well. Yeah, I don't need to, you know, try and hide it inside a byte string. Um, I can just natively represent it. Um, I part of this has actually come. Um, I had some pushback internally in the company over our usage in, in especially in the JSON format of having a, a you know a string payload and a base 64 encoded string payload yeah um, I had a lot of people coming to me saying well why is that you know the the content type tells you what's in the string so why why do we need to treat them differently um, I also think if you if we represent bytes explicitly um, then you know it's a proto buff marshalling as to how those get um, put on the wire um, it's I don't have to do any application encoding. Yeah, it's just a buffer. I just stick it on there. We don't really care. Yeah, I don't have to encode that byte string, those bytes into a string to be able to carry them. 
I can't remember how the Avro um, addressed this. I, I must admit, I haven't looked at the Avro spec. Um, I, I don't know if that if Avro allows you to carry um, raw raw bytes. Um, but that was my thinking. Yeah, if it's a binary payload, I can just pass it as a binary payload. Okay. Any other quick questions for Jim? Okay. Let me I'm, just. I'm poke nervous with the lack of questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me let me poke the Google guys for a minute. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the all the mechanics, but just based on my recollection from, from five years ago. There's absolutely no issues with encoding uh, binary objects within that room. I mean, we've done it. I just can't remember the mechanics. Yeah. Well, let me, let me say what I was going to say, though. That <clears throat> I know we have some Google folks on the call. And so if you guys can maybe poke some uh, protobuf experts within the company to take a look at this, I'd love to get their opinions on it. I, I already picked Evan Anderson. I know he was one of the first folks. I, I said, no, he didn't create the original one we had, but he was definitely... Uh, looking at the one we we had a long time ago, um, and I think he may have been the one that suggested we drop it because it wasn't it wasn't quite right. And so I did poke him to take a look at it. But if there are other Google folks who who know of, of experts um, in this area, we'd love to get their feedback. Yeah, as I said, I mean, I I I sat on the fence with using the one-off construct. Um, I know you know it does introduce a little bit of um, a performance impact. But on the flip side, it makes it very explicit about what you're passing around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Vinay, your hands up. So I had a question around the, the context and the consumption, right? Uh, uh, what I mean by that is uh, obviously when you're using uh, protobufs to serialize, you need uh, deserialization capabilities. How does that handshake happen? How is that expected? Is that a type of uh, encoding or something like that? Is that, uh, and that's not uh, clear to me from this uh, pull request. So maybe just adding a little bit more context around it will also be really helpful as we think about this. So, so you mean the notion of how I would transport, you know, um, a serialized, you know, a, a protobuf cloud event over HTTP in structured form? Is that what you're no, referring that's to? Not, that's not the question. I think the question is, as a sender, let's say I choose to use protobuf and I serialize it and I send it out. And as a consumer, how do I know that it is, I need to, it's, it's a protobuf serialization and use the consequent deserialization capabilities as opposed to Abro or JSON? Ah, okay. So that would be in the, the content in the transport, it would use a, I think you just was past it. Oh, actually. did I? Where yeah. is it? Um, so, oh, yeah, the transport layer. So much like in the JSON format, you say if it's a structured payload, then we say cloud events plus JSON. Um, so here, you know, if you're using HTTP, for instance, then the content type would be, would be what's shown on the screen there. So that's how you're, my understanding from a cloud event perspective is that how that's how we differentiate uh, that it's a um, a structured event because it, it's application slash cloud events plus yeah and then the actual um, encoding or content type is what follows after that so that's what we do for Jason I assume we do the same for Avro got it thank you so much and uh, my bad uh, I missed that no no it's okay <laughs> All right, any other questions? All right, cool. Thank you, Jem. And just a reminder, um, uh, please review it during the week so we can try to possibly vote on it next week. Um, uh, if you see any issues, uh, please open up uh, comments in the PR. So this is all, I know, I, you know, I've not tried end-to-end -end sort of sending stuff around. I, do you want me, I, I don't want it to be a purely theoretical write-up. Um, do you want some evidence so I can actually make it work? <laughs> that would always be good, yes, if you could test it. Yeah, testing would be good. Okay. Yeah. Um, to be honest, though, I, <clears throat> or at least maybe it's a wish more than anything else, I would assume that um, once the PR gets merged and it's out there, I, I can't imagine our SDK folks wouldn't look to pick it up and try playing with it, too. Right. But I think okay. some initial testing from your side would be really good, I would assume. All right. Okay. Oh, Vinay, your hands up again. 
Sorry, uh, one more question, Doug, as I've been a part of this team now for like uh, two months, uh, I'm just wondering, as we start supporting newer encoding schemes, et cetera, what kind of uh, out-of-the-box testing capabilities do we have that we can do, you know, quickly test these kinds of things, run these quick tests and so on? Is there something that's readily available or should we start thinking about having that kind of a capability? So I'm not sure we have a whole lot now beyond what the SDKs offer, but I'm going to poke on Scott here for a sec, because I know Scott has done a lot of thinking around conformance test suites and something not necessarily 100% related to what you're asking, but I think it kind of touches on it a little. Um, but I think that's probably the closest thing we have sort of in the works. Scott, you want to comment a little on that? Honestly, slicky has been doing most of the performance testing. Oh, okay. I've been doing conformance testing which is different. Yeah. So I, I think if, if, Vinay, I think if you want more detail about what they've been looking at, I think you might need to reach out to those two guys. Good. Uh, sorry, can you repeat their names? Yes, yeah, Scott, Scott Nichols from VMware, and then uh, Slinky or Francesco um, from Red Hat. We also have a, a new Cucumber uh, set up with uh, some pre-canned Cucumber tests, and then there's some light integration that happens for SDKs. I'll take a look at it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, thank you, everybody. All right, all right, moving forward. Um, let's see, so this one, I think is the only other PR that's out there that's discussable. Um, so since last time we talked, Oh, thank you, Vinay. There's a link in the chat from Scott if you want to take a look at the performance stuff. Um, since the last time we talked, I think the only real change I may have made is, oh, fudge. I think I forgot to push. I thought I, I changed this from service to something different. I forgot to push it. Darn it. Um, I'm trying to remember what I made it. <laughs> Mike, do you, oh. No. If you do the text editor, there is that undo button. Yeah. Gosh, I hate it when I do stupid stuff. I even thought I made a comment in here what I would change it to. Oh, no, wait, no. Oh, fuck. I apologize. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can find my code. No. And no, actually in my code it says service. What was I thinking? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I was mixing up source and service. No, I changed, it used to be source class and then I changed it to service. I apologize. Gosh, getting old stinks. Where is it? Do, do, do. <sighs> okay, yeah. So in the previous version of this, I think I had a uh, source class or something like that. And then I changed it to service because I thought that might be um, a better representation of the abstract concept of this thing that's going to be generating potentially lots of different events for lots of different sources. I don't know whether service is good enough or whether it's overloaded because everything out there is a service these days, but that's, that's my initial, that was my initial take on trying to fix the problem of people not liking the word service class. I'm sorry, source class. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Okay. We didn't discuss it last time, didn't we? We, so I, know we I know we talked a little bit about it. I don't remember where we landed, but I think we did talk a little bit about it. I think we landed on the fact that uh, source class was not the right word. But, uh, <laughs> right. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, for me, service is good. Okay. So, let me, so there, uh, to me, th there's two different parts of this PR. There's one which is, you know, sort of adding the, the text up here this pseudo YAML type stuff. There's a little bit of wordsmithing. That's one piece. And obviously a big part of that is the word service and services, um, as opposed to, uh, what was it called before? Uh, Start with a P, producer, provider, one of those, right? Then the, then the second part is um, the examples that talk about how to do queries. And that's this thing down here. And what I'd like to do is, I guess, split the discussion into two. First 
is there any concern about the, the first part, the wordsmithing, the use of service, and nothing set in stone so we can change it later, but I'd like to first focus on the, the wordsmithing part more than anything else, and then we'll talk about the query part second. So Scott, your hands up. Yeah, I was just implementing the uh, abuse protection for webhooks, and I wonder if we could kind of leverage some of that terminology with origin. Origin. What do people think? The infamous origin. Uh, <laughs> last one. Well, my, my only concern with the word origin is when I hear the word, it almost sounds like the, the, the original endpoint that sent out the event. It doesn't necessarily convey this notion of a bigger piece of componentry that can have many different event sources under the covers. Origin sounds like a singular kind of a thing to me. Well, it, origin is point to point. It's the in the context of a, a live request. Right. Right. And I, but I, I, at least to me anyway, I think the, the, the entity that goes here is bigger than just a single, a single thing, right? It's, it's, it's almost like the, the, the global, app, you know, it's like if it's an object store, right? It's like, or, or GitHub, let's pick on GitHub. It, GitHub is a service. It's not, I don't think of it necessarily as an origin per se. Maybe well, it's a not, Say it again? Producer. Well, see, then we get back to the problem we had before, where producer and provider are too close together. People are going to mix the two up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, uh, Doug, I mean, if you take the service mesh example, right, you have like a, a container in a pod, and then you also have a proxy, for example, and then uh, the proxy is sending stuff on behalf. So maybe my suggestion was to try to distinguish from, given our discussion from last time, how about originator, to actually d distinguish and identify the, the entity that was sending, originated, literally originated the event, and then the, to, to identify the proxy, which is that bigger system, if you will, that you described, to call that the source. Um, uh, uh, uh. Well, you, you, it almost sounds like you're trying to redefine source, which we can't redefine. Because source is defined by cloud events, so we can't touch that. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this rat hole, <laughs> to be honest. Well, origin can have many different sources, right? Origin, originator, we're kind of dancing on almost the same puppet. So I, I'm, I'm plus one for origin. So if we, if we use origin on line 127 that I've highlighted, what would be the plural? Origins? Does that sound right to people? To people. To people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'm just struggling, I, and, I, and I admit, it's a, it's a personal preference kind of thing. I just, when I hear the word origin, I don't think GitHub. Right? Yeah, plus one for uh, all the way with you, <laughs> Prefer service on that one, but it's as you say, it's used like just preferences. Yeah, and th that's that's what I'm kind of struggling with is because origin to me is a very is is more of a a lower level geeky terms like the origin of this message, right? And I, we're trying to convey something bigger. That's a I, at least to me anyway, a little more user friendly that says, hey, if you're trying to map these things to concepts you understand, GitHub maps to what? Origin doesn't jump out at me. Service does. Yeah, it's like I should be able to explain to my wife. <laughs> there you go. She understand that better. <laughs> I agree. I don't know. Okay, what, what if we do this? Because no, nothing is set in stone. We can change these things later. Is service horrible while people think about whether origin or something else would be better? I, I'm just trying to get away from the, the P word. Because the, the P word we have in there right now, I think, is incredibly confusing. I was just about to suggest prominence, but that's another few words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just to make it more fun. Mike, your hands up. Yeah, so I, um, service is potentially the right word. Service is perhaps the most overloaded term yep. in, uh, in cloud computing. Yep. Uh, so like that would be my only caution against that. Um, I think I personally think that source is the right word, but I, you know, I threw that bomb out last week that I think cloud events define service wrong or source wrong. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think where we're, where we're, what we're left with is service is reasonable. And 
I would encourage folks to, rather than bike shedding on the name, to think about the people that are gonna utilize this and the environment with which they're gonna use it. And if a user is selecting a, um, uh, <laughs> trying to think of another word, uh, you know, they're selecting where they want events from, they're gonna, they're gonna think about the list of service providers or services or, you know, anyway, service is fine, uh, but yeah, think about it in that context, like let's not get too weird on the name. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you, you, you said there. And I think, thank you for speaking up, Mike, since, since you put the, put together the first draft here, I was gonna poke on you to see whether you I, I spent live with hours service. wrestling with this problem. So yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm over here laughing when the mute button is on. I'm sure you are. Yes. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, I'll, I'll get to you, Vinay, in a sec. Just, just keep in mind, folks, we are not looking for the perfect word at this point in time. We are looking to make forward progress. And I, and to me, getting away from a, the P word is forward progress at this point in time. Not that service is gonna be set in stone, just incremental progress is all I'm looking for. Vinay. Oh, I'll just add to the jokes anyway. And <laughs> just the G word, how about a generic, service is uh, very, very generic, right? Everything is a service as has been commented on. Uh, but generator, how about a generator? Because as a consumer, I mean, I think that's the context that I'm always trying to uh, address these things. I really don't care about the name, but I need the context. And how about a generator? I need to know, I want to subscribe to these, this class of generators or a generator or a generating service. Does that make sense? Anybody want to chime in on that one? It's also very Python. Python. Pythonistic. Yeah, and generator is also uh, has a, in the, especially in coding, has a very distinct meaning because there's a lot of code generators which yeah, could create I, a source I, of confusion. So. I, 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 again, personal preference. I'm I I'm not enamored with generator just because I would not know what it meant. I, One I option, maybe in the same vein, would be, um, but but less implication of of being the actual generator would be um, emitter. Um, the problem I have with generator as well as origin is that they both imply that it's it's the thing that created the event as opposed to, it, it could be that it's just a transport passing an event through. Um, so any of those verbs that sound more active, maybe, maybe don't fit as well. Okay, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> trying to get out of the rat hole again. What if we do this? And I know it's, <clears throat> the suggestion is obviously very biased because it's my PR. Um, could we accept source now? I'm sorry, God, I did it again. Not source, can we accept service now? And then I will open an issue to start gathering alternatives and we can hash through an issue and not take up time on this call. And then you can throw all these wonderful joke or not joke names into the issue. And we'll revisit this. Sounds good to me. Anybody object to that? Good. Okay, so back to my other question. In general, everybody okay with the wordsmithing and changes I made aside from the name of service? Okay. What I'd then like to do is jump down to the other thing. Doc, so you know what would help if, when you do create that extra issue? Mm -hmm. could, uh, that little comment that you have, what it is, like when you can identify, blah, blah, blah. If you could probably elaborate more as to what it is, what it will do, what it's supposed to do, and so on and so forth, it's just preempt and then it'll be easier to. Do you, I just want to make sure I understand what you're asking, right? You're asking me just to make sure that I have a clear definition of what is the entity that we're trying to name and what its purpose in life is? Yeah, like we, we back in the days had this sort of thing where we would say name this class and we would just say, explain what we wanted to do and then people come up with an idea as what the proper name for the class would be, for example. So it's the same kind of idea. Okay. Where you yeah. can basically provide maybe more details as to what. Uh, yeah, what and to be honest, I don't know whether I did a good or bad job. I did try to define service up here. Uh, whether that's, like I said, whether it's right or wrong, don't know, but that's what I would attempt to do. But I would definitely, if nothing else, at least paste this text into the issue. And if people want to wordsmith that as well, go for it. Okay. Um, 
the other thing that I wanted to focus on that's part of this PR is I did start giving a little bit of an alternative way to do queries. Um, Cause I know Mike had something in his original proposal and I, I, I have some concerns about that. And uh, I think we talked a little bit about this in the, actually I think in this PR itself, where I think Mike, your proposal, if I can find it or show an example, uh, let me do this. I can find some examples. Doo, 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 doo. Well, I mean, the big thing is I was starting, starting like thinking about the entry point and starting from from both ends. So there's this, there's a scenario of I want to view a list of services right. that I might want events from, or man, I got the event type that I want. I want you know com dot example dot storage. Where can I get that from? And if we don't think that second entry point is a valid use case, then much of what I specified or part of what I specified could be dropped. Yeah, and I think, I think the way you phrase that is probably the right way to sort of phrase the question for the group, right? So, yep. um, actually, yeah, so, okay, let me, let me go back over here, just try to frame the, the conversation better. So, I think one of the questions for the group is, do, 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 do. And the, when, other, the other thing I put in the comments was that this, this is why GraphQL actually lends itself really nicely to this problem because it doesn't require us to prescribe the entry point, but let the consumer of the information ask for exactly what they want. Yeah. Right. So to, to, to elaborate a little on what, on, what, on what Mike and I are talking about here is if you wanted to search for services that have certain properties, would you expect to type services slash and then the service name <clears throat> and then potentially other query parameters that further qualify that service because you're serving, but, but the main point here is you're searching for the service by name. Or if you wanted to search for things by types, would you do, you know, slash types slash whatever? That's one alternative. Right? So basically service and types can become top level entities. Or would people prefer, do, 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 do. Uh, where is it? Something like this, where everything is specified as query parameters. So service equals whatever you're searching for, type equals whatever you're searching for. Because I think, I think both are probably technically valid um, let me go ahead and state my biased opinion first. I kind of prefer this because I think this gives us more flexibility, especially if we're going to eventually be searching on other things like protocol and stuff. Whereas it's not clear to me whether this format over here means you now need to have a top level and a top level word for every possible thing you're going to search for because that's the thing that people care most about. Whereas this says we don't care what you what you as a user think is most important. Everything is just a query parameter. Mike, maybe you want to chime in or maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> I just noticed you were off mute, so I was going to pick on you. I forgot to mute. Okay. Anybody want to chime in in terms of a preference? Because what I could do is say, well, pull this out of the PR and only talk about the wordsmithing stuff first and leave this for a second PR. That's another option as well. I was going to offer that as a sort of a compromise to worry, to split the two. Jim, your hand's up. You can't run. I'm wondering if that would be a, a viable approach. I, I think that would be an incremental change for you, which I think you, you would appreciate. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess my, my concern, I, I'm, I'm still sort of on the GraphQL side of the fence to a certain extent. Um, but the trouble with some of these is that they're completely unbounded. Yeah. So, you, as soon as you go down this road, you need to include pagination I mean, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, because I may not have any idea what what services you offer or what events are available, and that list could be extremely big. Mm -hmm. um, also, I guess you need to account for regexing. Yeah, so I might know that com dot example is a, an event family, but I don't know any of the types underneath that. Um, so I don't have a good answer to this, but I, I think it's I think it's a kind of worms. Um, but 
but also I, I did put a link in. Um, I've, we've used RSQL, which is like a, a, a version of Fickle um, for some of this sort of RESTful query stuff. Um, I don't think it would address your, you know, what's the root of the query, you know, uh, but it, it does sort of formalize doing um, equals and not equals and ins and not ins and, and stuff like that. So you, you do get quite a rich sort of query semantic out of that. So, yeah, I'm not, I, I was hoping to necessarily, I was hoping to kind of avoid, as you said, the, the, the can of worms with the full, uh, full, with the full set of things that we might want to include as part of our query language, if you want to call it a query language, right? Because um, I'm not convinced yet whether we want to support everything you mentioned or we want to keep it really simple and say, no, we're going to keep it simple. If you want to do something more, more advanced, then we have this GraphQL thing. As, a, as, an, as an optional layer that sits on top, right? Um, I wasn't sure where we wanted to go with that yet. Um, but it seems to me that when you start to think about doing anything beyond the most basic thing of simple word searching, I, it seems to me that using query parameters gives you the most flexibility, doesn't it? Right, because I, I, I'm not quite sure how to do it this way without, without feeling like we're sort of bastardizing things. I, I mean, that's a clear? common use of rest paths, right? Is to include, in a way, these are sub-resources, right? Yeah. These, the specific event types that a service provides are a sub-resource. Um, yeah. So like the, the line of the box above where your cursor on is, is certainly how I think about it. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with you. If I knew exactly what I was working for, this is exactly what I would type to, to traverse the tree. Totally agree with you. Right, but if you if you stop short, like if you do example.com slash services, you should get a list of all the services. And then, you know, slash Bob service slash types, you should get a list of all the types. True. Right. I guess the question I would have then is, okay, if you do example.com slash protocols, should I see a list of all the protocols that are supported across something? I don't know. In, wait, in typical REST, the service would be singular because you've picked blob service and types would be singular because you've picked com example widget. So this would example.com service blobs, blob service type com example widget. And the types is the, the way you know how to make a query. Yep, good catch that. Yeah, that, that's a good point too. Okay, I apologize, I forgot to see the hands up. So John, your hand was up first. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I think what Mike was, was talking about, I think, I think part of the issue here is, you know, what are we, what are we trying to do, right? I mean, the notion of the, the, the core notion of rest is the, is the, the discoverability, right? Which uh, I think Scott and Mike were both just talking about. If we're just, if we're just trying to create an endpoint over HTTP where we want to allow just, you know, completely random, um, access to the core data. I think that's where the the camp that says we should just go to straight GraphQL. I think that's part of where they're coming from, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's sort of at least in my mind in this discussion, the question is, are we are we trying to put structure into this, right? To whatever degree of generality we're trying to get on the querying side, but I mean REST has a notion of, I mean, it is a model, right? We're creating a model of these, these uh, restful um, objects, if you will, versus mm -hmm. here's a sea of data, have, have at it, right? And I think that's the more fundamental, um, I don't know, existential question mm -hmm. here. So let me, let me poke on you a little there, John, to elaborate, because I, I think everything you said makes a lot of sense, but when you, you, in particular, at the end there, you start talking about a, a model, and I definitely agree with that. Would this type of line then violate that model because the model probably starts with services up top, not types? Do you uh, think this is violates that model, or do you think it's still consistent? Okay, so um, I'll, I'll put on my Rastafarian hat <laughs> okay. um, to answer that. So one of the one of the problems that people have in in over over now decades with REST is 
they think modeling means there's a single fixed um, model, right? Mm -hmm. With a single hierarchy. That's that. It's better to think of those, what you're calling the top level things, uh, in database terms, think of it more like materialized views. Yep. Right. So, so you can have multiple different materialized views into your same data, right? Yep. That gives you, that you come at it via different dimensionality, uh, is, is more of how I think of that. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Then the following question I have then is, would that mean that it would be our responsibility as spec authors to define a fixed list of views up front, or should they be able to put pretty much any property as a top level thing? So then that goes back to the REST versus GraphQL in my, in my mind. I, I, I would suggest starting off with, you know, whatever some core small set of obvious dimensions mm -hmm. and, and see how limiting or not limiting that is to people. Um, and like you, you mentioned earlier uh, in this discussion, I mean, the, you know, if, if we're going to do this thing where we say, hey, here's this base, uh, base approach, and if you need the full generality, we built this, whatever, whether it's optional or not, GraphQL chunk on top that you can use if you want to, you know, do something not part of this core set. I, mm -hmm. I, I actually kind of like that idea. Um, because the, the, the passion of the GraphQL community uh, in this call has made me spend more time with GraphQL and, and, I, and I see that point. Okay, cool, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for elaborating and let me to poke on you. Jim, your hands up. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good approach. Yeah, and, and then you would say, you know, list me all the services and then you'd have a filter on that for the protocol. I mean, I, and I think that's probably the way to approach that is just try and pin on a couple of routes uh, and go from there and not okay. try and not try and put a dimension in for every potential thing you might want to filter or sort on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'd go with that. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think there are a couple of concrete views that we should be prescriptive about. And, and that's sort of what I did in the original one. Um, uh, we want to promote interoperability, right? So, we should think about what we think the minimum set is. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm definitely hearing from the group that I should remove the second part of the PR, which is the query stuff and focus just on the wordsmithing and uh, provider to service switch. Um, any, any counter review to that? Any, or any objection to heading down that path? Okay. I will make those changes. Um, Given we are nowhere near 1.0, do you guys are you guys comfortable with me making that change of ripping out that second part of the PR and then merging it, or do you want to wait until next week for another round of reviews? It, it, it would strictly be removing stuff. I would not be adding anything. You're pretty shifty. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's what I was trying to figure out whether you guys trust me or not. If, or, or if you feel more comfortable, what we can do is this. I will make the changes today and then give you guys until end of day Friday before I even think about merging. How's that? Or I can wait. I honestly don't care. It's not like this is that urgent. I'm just trying to make some forward progress here because I know we've gone several weeks without any PRs being merged. Anybody have a preference? Okay, tell you what, I'll, I wanna be aggressive. So I'd like, what I like to do is I'll make the changes. I promise to get out there today and then I'll wait until Friday <clears throat> to let people have a quick review. Um, and then no objection by the end of Friday, I'll merge it or wait till Saturday morning or something. Okay. Thank you everybody. Um, Okay, that was it. Um, Francesco, did you want to talk about this one or hold off still? I didn't see any changes. Hold off. That's what I thought, okay. Are there any other topics for the uh, cloud event type specifications work? Otherwise you might end early. Okay, uh, before we end, let me do my favorite part of the meeting, roll call. Um, I did see Ryan talk in the chat, so I'm gonna give him credit. Uh, Vaclav, are you there? 
No, yeah, Becklove, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. And Paul, are you there? Oh, Paul left. Okay, what about Vishnu? Okay, did I miss anybody on roll call? Okay, in that case, if you're not interested in the SDK work, uh, you feel free to drop and thank you everybody for joining. And let's just give everybody like two minutes or so um, and then we'll start up the SDK call, okay? And I'll take some notes here. Sorry, Francesca, but you knew it was coming. All right, tell you what, I'll give it till 52 on my clock, so hopefully less than a minute, then we'll get started. Hey, Paul, you're back. Back and better than ever. Here you go. I'll give you credit. Do, 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 do. Pow, baby. All right, 52 on my clock. Let's get this puppy on the road. Okay, um, Francesco, are you ready? Or do you need a little more time to yes. compile? Yes, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me stop sharing and let you share. Yeah, luckily the compilation cache hit them. Excellent. <laughs> so, 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 okay. So uh, I'm gonna show you uh, a demo uh, which shows more or less the capabilities of SDK Rust. So in this first release, we have, of course, most of the APIs are, are considered unstable. Uh, but we already have some you know, interesting integration. So we have the basic create. Uh, creates in Rust are like modules. Um, the basic create provides the event data structure, provides uh, the JSON event format implementation. And what really matters is that this module, this create, is tested with uh, GNU libc, uh, WebAssembly, and Muzzle toolchains. And then we have uh, I implemented the integration for two uh widely used uh, um, libraries out there actix web for creating web servers and the request for creating um, web clients so do you see the code uh yep is okay. it too small for people or does you need to make it bigger i think that's good if you yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, no, didn't change. It's okay. If it's just me, don't worry about it. I'm on a little 13 inch Mac, but go for it. I, I just full screen it. Okay. So, um, one demo. Um, it's this one, and it's a demo that shows a web server. So uh, you see on the right, on the left screen, the code of the server. 
So this is uh, the main of the application. The main of the application is done with Actix that provides uh, an even loop implementation. And I, I, have to, I, have, I, I have two paths. On one path, I just print the event. And on the other path, I uh, reply back with an event. The other part of the demo is this other example. And this is a really interesting example because it, it shows how the cloud event SDK can compile to WebAssembly. So this is the HTML of the page. It's just a form. And this is the JavaScript of the page, which invokes uh, the compiled WebAssembly module. And then using some jQuery thing, uh, it invokes uh, the WebAssembly module uh, created with Rust. And the Rust code is there. Uh, basically, when it's invoked, uh, it creates a new event using the event builder, and then it sends the event using a request, which com which gets compiled to WebAssembly. So let's run it. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, because this one needs npm. So okay, okay. yes, npm run serve. Okay. And on the other side, start the server. So no, this is not npm. Cargo run. Okay. The application is ready. And where we go to eighty. Okay. Uh, we see the form. I compile the form to send the event to the target. Let me add some mock data and I send. When I do send, on the other side, I see that I received the event. And that's pretty much everything. Any questions? Cool. What I really want to underline here is that the module compiles with, with assembly, compiles with glibc, and compiles with Moosle. For who doesn't know Moosle, Moosle is a micro implementation of libc and allows to create Docker images of the size of nine mega. So a uh, uh, web service, whatever created with this SDK is around, is around nine mega, 10 mega. That's cool. Size. Excellent. Any questions? All right, cool. Thank okay. you very much. And within five minutes, perfect. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can share something again, even though I don't think I'm going to stay here very long. Where's my screen? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Uh, quickly. Um, unfortunately, I don't see Grant on the call, and I was hoping that he would be, but Lance, you're there. Um, but I was kind of hoping to get both. Anyway, so I know last time we talked, um, Actually, it was the last time or the time before. We talked about you know having type TypeScript SDK versus JavaScript SDK, and, and we needed both or something like that. And um, since then, there have been lots of conversations going on in the background, and it seems like we may have come to a fairly good resolution where it, where I think we're going to try to work uh, to support both TypeScript and JavaScript within the JavaScript SDK, and that's all goodness. Um, however. What wasn't a hundred percent clear to me was whether that meant we could uh, kill the TypeScript SDK, or whether it needed to stick around for for other reasons, like maybe we weren't sure whether this this, this merging is going to happen or whatnot. Um, so I was going to ask on this week's call whether we could formally kill it or not, but obviously since Grant's on the call and he was the main proponent for the separate one, I'm not sure we can make a formal decision. Um, so what I'd like to propose is first to find out from the group on the call whether they see any reason to keep the TypeScript SDK around or not, just to see whether, whether I'm mis misreading the tea leaves. And then I will, if you guys do agree that we should get rid of it, um, I will then reach out to Grant and get his perspective on it. And if for some reason he thinks we need to keep it around for some reason, we could talk again either offline or on this call next week to see why he thinks we need it and whether everybody agrees or not. Um, but at least it does seem like everybody's gonna try to do most of their work in the Java SDK. Um, let, me, let, me, let me pause there. Lance, does that fairly summarize it? Yeah, I think so. Um, the, the sort of 
alternative that that I had proposed landed yesterday. Um, so uh, so that's happening in the JavaScript SDK. Um, yeah, I, I I don't see a reason to keep the TypeScript thing around, but I think it's probably good to talk to Grant about that. Yeah, because I don't want to do something that he that you know I don't want to misinterpret his comments. So does anybody on the call think we need to keep the TypeScript SDK around? Okay, cool. I will reach out to Grant and see where his thinking at is on this. So thank you, everybody. All right, now to the main show. Um, hey, right at the top of the hour, perfect. Okay, um, trying to figure out the best way to approach this going forward. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. So let's start over here. Because I think, Oleg, you added a comment here. Um, I guess what I'd like to do is have you sort of summarize your comment here, because this is on your PR, and sure. then see what kind of comments that brings up and see where that takes us in terms of a, of a discussion. Does that sound fair? Yep. Uh, let me know when I'm ready. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, this PR, uh, we have discussed it as a group uh, several weeks ago, actually spent about an hour. Um, the gist of this PR is to streamline, kind of simplify the cloud event interface within uh, Java SDK to make sure that uh, it stays simple, concise, and represents the cloud event uh, as defined by the specification and keeps both optional functionality as well as the auxiliary functionality out of it. Um, so that's the kind of uh, the, the gist of this PR. However, in the process of doing this, and uh, uh, there was um, quite a number of uh, disagreements on once those auxiliary and optional uh, operations are moved, where are they moved uh, and why here and not there and how and so on and so forth. So um, after sort of reviewing all the comments and some of the thumbs up, thumb down and the other and responses, it actually appears to us that there's really not a whole lot of disagreements here, rather if you kind of uh, look at them separately. And so what I did with this comment is attempted to basically outline the three contentious point, the three contentious points that I believe are part of this PR and basically make a proposal that simply states that, okay, we're gonna cancel this PR and instead we're gonna open three different issues and uh, provide three different PRs, which essentially basically kind of breaks down this uh, problem into three individual problems. And by doing so, you know, we'll, we'll, all, we'll get to the same sort of result, but um, we'll get there gradually. So uh, the three points of contentions as we believe they are, uh, the builder methods that uh, I, we believe should, uh, that should be consolidated and moved into, um, kind of a version right, right now i moved all the auxiliary functionality into a single generic you know catch-all utility class uh with explicit comment that we can address it later but you know i'll be the first one to admit that sometimes later doesn't come and it sits there forever so um fine so um and as i said in my comment it appears to be actually one of the sources of agreement that uh, as mark suggested um to have a version builders for builder for version one and builder for version two and kind of uh, consolidate all those methods around there. And that uh, not only follows some of the best, uh, some of the typical uh, or expected Java patterns, it also provides a consistency of uh, how the cloud events are gonna be built. Now there is a second point of contention is the encoding operations, which is basically the structure to binary, binary to structured and vice versa. Um, so, uh, again, the suggestion was that I believe we kind of can get all behind is to create some kind of a encoder utility or encoder like message encoder or cloud event encoder. We can argue about the name uh, during the PR discussion, but, and this is where the, 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 the methods which uh, uh, do the structural and binary will get moved. And last but not least, and I believe that's the least contentious point because we kind of agreed, agreed on it on the very first call after Clements showed how they did it in um, 
in C Sharp SDK and provided some uh, uh, justification uh, for some real use cases where this would be kind of important, uh, which is basically provide iterable access to attributes, not just uh, access to individual attributes. So we're, we're definitely have no problem with that. So, and the, the rest of the comment is basically the titles of uh, the three issues that we're proposing. And I'll stop here. Okay. Any comments from the group before I add my uneducated comments? <laughs> okay. So, so in my limited understanding of this, <clears throat> it seems to me that the third one um, may not only be the one where there may be a possible agreement to come to first, but it actually may be almost at the heart of the other ones in the sense that I kind of get the sense that if you can resolve three and decide how you're going to access a cloud event and its attributes, um, the shape of the cloud event interface, whether it, it's just one interface, whether it extends other interfaces, that kind of stuff. It seems to me that if you can resolve that, the other issues may become less contentious. Is that a fair way to summarize it? In all fairness, I don't see the yes. relevance, but um, um, I mean, the attributes is basically, it's more of a convenience to give iter iterable access to attributes. The, the builders, the encoders, I mean, maybe I'm missing a point. Doug, no, okay, I, I, I guess then let me elaborate a little bit on why I'm saying that. <clears throat> um, it, when I when I look at things like the the builder stuff, and and obviously correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong because I'm mm -hmm. I'm still coming up to speed, but it seems to me when I look at the two different views of the world, when you guys talk about using a builder to do um, some of this stuff. I, what I'm hearing from, from from Francesco is we may not necessarily need a builder interface or a builder class to do it. He he seems to think that we can do it by leveraging the the visitor pattern instead. And and when you sort of compare those two views, and this is where I get a little fuzzy on whether I'm right or not, I almost wonder whether the builder stuff is can be implemented as a layer on top of the visitor pattern or whatever mechanism you use to extract the attributes from a cloud event, right? Or, or to set them in a cloud event, right? So I'm wondering whether there's a layered approach here that says if the native way to talk to a cloud event and get its attributes and set its attributes, it works for you, whether that's direct getters and setters, whether it's a visitor pattern, go for it. But well, the but let me, let me just finish and, and then you can correct me where, where I got wrong. Yeah, but then if you want something that's maybe a simpler user experience, if you want to put it in those terms, that's where the builder comes into play. And so I'm kind of wondering whether there's a layered approach here that we could take to solving these problems. And let me pause there and see where I got it wrong. Uh, you didn't get it wrong. It's more like uh, we can uh, impose either mechanics of how to do things or we can say, here's the cloud event which uh, here's the object or type representing cloud event. I can look at the specification. I can look at the type. Everything aligns one for one. It's mm -hmm. clear. I can go consult the spec and understand how things are aligned within the code. And you can tell me, oh, by the way, we have this utilities that you can utilize visitor patterns and build this or do that or whatever, or we have a builder or I can do my own builder. I mean, I don't have to be forced to uh, create a cloud event or any kind of object, unless there is a very, very specific case for which I can only create it in one way and one way only. But we're not even there yet. So mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna discuss what those cases may be. So, um, so the point is that, like I said, the gist of this entire PR, like, like all the contentious issues, unfortunately are not even um, at the core of this PR. It's really uh, at the peripherals. It's like, okay, well, um, are we going to call them builders? Are we going to call them visitors? Are we going to call them encoders? Are we going to call them whatever? Fine, we can have this discussion. But the real gist of this PR is to make sure that the cloud event stays simple, stays concise, represents the actual cloud event as it defined by the specification, 
and operations such as building, converting, transforming, encoding, reading, writing, uh, are implemented in the appropriate places. But okay. those places are not the cloud event uh, interface itself. Okay, so let, let, let's let's build on that then, because I, I think that is then focusing on number three. And mm -hmm. so why don't we why don't we take the next step and dive a little deeper on what we think the cloud event interface should look like and see where we disagree. Does that sound fair? Um, I, it, it sounds fair and uh, that, yeah, so that's what uh, this PR, if you look at the state of the cloud event interface in this PR, then with the, with the addition of uh, iterator for attributes, or iterable access to attributes. That's pretty much, if you click on the actual, uh, sorry, because you look at the diffs, if yeah. you look at the, yeah, there, and then click on source, view source, or right view file, yeah. yeah. That should uh, show you what it, so in other words, the only, it, it, what is missing uh, is that point three, which is addition of get attributes, like as okay. a collection. Basically. Okay, so. Like similar to, similar to get extensions. Okay, John, your hands up. Yeah, so, so sorry for a semi-meta question is, given that we have support for multiple languages, is there, is there some discussion? Is there some, I don't know, I, I, maybe consistency or similarity in terms of across languages, right? Does, does that help, does, it, does that help inform some of these I don't know, contentious discussion points. That's a uh, great point. And to answer your question, uh, Clement's view into C sharp representation of cloud event had a heavy influence uh, because you are correct at some point of time, the whole point of cloud events is not to Java to Java, it's Java to whatever or whatever to Java, right? So, or whatever to whatever. So we need to make sure that once the cloud event is sent, we can at least, uh, from the type perspective, that's just my opinion, we should at least uh, have some consistency. And without even knowing the language, I should be able to look at the cloud event representation in Go or in C Sharp and say, yeah, I kind of understand, it looks very similar or looks what it's supposed to look like, looks like it's defined, looks the way it's defined in the spec, so yes. Okay, Scott, your hands up. I think that that's the whole point of the bindings for the protocols, right? That's that's the interrupt piece. Um, Clemens' original SDK uh, guidance had had a lot of uh, a lot of requirements on how implementators should implement, and the trouble is, it's just not idiomatic for different languages because what's good for Java isn't necessarily what's good for C sharp or Go or Rust or JavaScript, and people that come to these languages that want to develop in Go or Rust or JavaScript need to program idiomatically. I can't agree more. And what we have right now is, well, um, what we have right now, it looks more like uh, another language written in Java. So we, it, so, but, 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 but. Let's not head down that direction quite yet. Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay. So when I look at this, I, thank you, Scott, for the comment, though. Um, so when I look at this, my, my general sense is I think in general, people are okay with the idea of well-defined getters. Now, there may be a question of whether they're immediately on the cloud event or whether the cloud event interface extends another interface. I think that's a a stylistic difference, but let's assume for a minute that one way or another, everybody, you, you're going to get well-defined getters on cloud events, either directly or indirectly. I think everybody's in agreement with that in general, right? Okay. So I think then the question comes around the, the mechanism by which people can just uh, get the generic attributes thing. Now, Oleg, you said that the, what's missing from this is the equivalent of 
of a get extensions except call the get attributes where you return not a map. accept extensions or extensions just add a similar method for get yeah attributes. yeah i'm sorry not replace i meant i meant copy yeah. this line yeah. and, and replace get extensions with the word attributes mm -hmm. now <clears throat> as i understand it there are two uh patterns at play here or and, and, and therefore two differences of opinion one is what you just described get extension um, uh, get attributes that returns a map mm -hmm. versus a visitor pattern and i think i think we need to talk about those two patterns because uh, again my limited my limited use of java is several years old now but i believe both are valid patterns in That's terms of java, java java developers may use one or the other they're both perfectly valid so i'm wondering whether the question then is do we have to actually choose one or the other or can we actually support both? And let me pause there and you guys can correct me if I got way wrong. So, can Scott, I, is your hand up? Yeah, Go ahead. I, my hand is up again. Um, yeah. Okay, so this, the git extensions method, because there are so many funky um, restrictions on the key for extensions, in Go we decided that this path, you pass in the key that you would like to get the extensions. We also provide this method, but having both where there's a key accessor because you want to do things like the user brings you a key that's maybe invalid or uh, camel cased, but in the translation to a protocol, you're going to flatten all the keys as it gets serialized out and then back in, you, you lose casing. So the, we found it was important to be able to have the user provide the key to access the map as a convenience because the keys are kind of broken. They're, they're lossy. Um, so let me ask, uh, Francisco, I'll get to you in a second. I just want to make sure I understand what Scott was saying. So I, I understand the idea of passing in the key name as a parameter. I get that. Uh, how do they find out the list of key names if they don't know them in advance? Do you also offer up like a, a get key names type of operation? Uh, we, we provide the um, a map accessor like this. Then you can look at the map and look at the keys if you want, if you want to iterate. Oh, so, so, okay. So you have... You have a get attributes method that returns a map, and then you also have a get by name kind of a thing. Oh, sorry, we have a get extensions like this returns a map with a key value. Uh, and we also have a get extension singular that you pass in the key and the, the method will fix it for you according okay. to the spec. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, Francesco, your hand was up or did you change your mind? Well, okay, no, I just wanted to say that I agree with having both. Uh, the approaches. There is no problem in adding both the approaches. And I agree, and also I agree with what Scott said uh, about having get extension and then more than returning a map, maybe a more idiomatic way in Java is returning the, the key set. So get extension, get extension names and get extension. And the, and the, and the, the same could be applied to get attributes. Anybody want to chime in there? I think if I had to do it again in, in Go, the, we, we do have a concept of being able to iterate over a key set and ask an accessor to, to grab both the attributes and the extensions, but we have it as two methods. And I think if I were to do it again, I would make it one method and then have some logic internally to understand what what like if you ask for a data scheme at a certain version that gets remapped to like the correct uh scheme key for example and so as you iterate over all attributes and extension it, it makes no difference to the encoders is that a visitor <laughs> uh, I, to me sure. it, to me it looks like to me it looks like the uh what to implement the environment message I mean, for how you're saying that, to me, it really looks like uh, what we implemented in binary message. With the exception yeah, yeah, of binary we, message, we have all this the format spec. Uh, yeah, I think we just broke it out into two accessors. There's, we, there's, like, like a, there's a difference between attributes and extensions inside of the Golang SDK, which is a direct uh, translation of the V0.1 spec where the extensions were in a bag. Mm -hmm. And also some of the limitations on how uh, decoding works in Go. So Scott, I want to make sure I understood what you said. It sounds like you're saying if you had to do it over again, 
you would have a get attributes, which returns a map, and a get attribute by name kind of a thing. No, no, I would actually, I would encourage a get method, get by key. And the key could be an attribute, which is known, or an extension, which is in this bag. Right. And the same method would, would access from both places. And then possibly a get me all of the set keys so that I can go and iterate over them. So if you don't have, you know, uh, data content type or data schema set, it wouldn't return that key for this event. Right. Not, okay. So you have, you have a, I'm going to try that. It's different. So, okay. You have a, I'm going to add, I'm going to be more verbose than I think you said it, but I think it's the same semantics. You're going to have a, but, get but attribute. wait, sorry. One more, one more thing. Yeah. I think this is all, this is more valuable for the encoders and decoders to be able to do this flexibility. I think it hurts usability if you don't have the the strongly typed getters, like is shown on the screen here. Right. I, I think we all agree we're going to have the strongly typed getters. I don't think that's a question. I think it's how do you deal with sort of the, the generic getter kind of thing, like this get extension thing, right? And I think what you were saying was if you had to do it over again, you would have the equivalent of a get attributes, which returns you a map of everything. You'd have a get attribute keys, which gets you a list of key names, and then you'd have a get attribute by name type of operation. But well, uh, right? no. No, okay, where am, where am I missing it, sorry. Uh, it depends on what, what uh, user you're targeting, right? If, if it's the encoder, it's, it, I have one recommendation. If it's for a user in a function, I have a different recommendation. Well, yeah, but you need to kind of lump them all together when you define the API overall, um, don't you? No, uh, you don't have to. Um, I, I, I actually agree with that point. And we have this uh, pattern within Spring as well, where we have accessors. Uh, so in other words, uh, the question I think, I believe what is being discussed right now is what should be exposed through the core cloud event interface. And then there is additional sort of uh, call them decorators, if you wish, which could expose additional accessor methods that would target specific users. Hmm. And, and, um, yeah. Am I correct, uh, Scott? That's 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 what I'm recommending because then the user doesn't get bogged down by like these some crazy whatever the encoders need to be generic. Exactly. Strongly type like pull data out and they can get access to their extensions. The the one meta point was that in in Go I haven't I didn't really get it all the way in there yet, but I wanted to be able to register extension ob like things that are helpers that get uh, built up in, in memory so that you can say like, give me the foobar extension set and it would return you several objects back, maybe um, hydrated from a different type of metadata. Right. So at the most basic level, meaning on this interface itself here, uh, what would you guys recommend? My, my recommendation uh, my is add one more method that's get extension and pass in a key so that you can plus one. You can help get the uh, correct casing of the key. I agree with that. Okay. Francesco? And, and, and Scott, the same for attributes, right? Um, no, no, I, com I completely agree with that. I mean, uh, get extension that gets a string as a key. Yeah, for sure. I don't see a harm in exposing the get attributes if you're going to do that, I would, I would actually say like get, make a method called get with, and it passes a key and that key gets translated into either the smart mapping of an attribute or the smart mapping of an extension that guess uh, uh, is an extension. Mm. Not ready to make that decision. <laughs> right. Because like from the user's point of view, they don't really care that it's an extension or a first class spec component. That's, that's just noise that we've made. But it'd be kind of I mean, cool to be able to say it, like get trace or get time and it just kind of works. I mean, I I wasn't ready that it's gonna go this direction. I'm all for it, but I, I just thought that would be too much of a too much one of way a you can achieve that kind of layering is if if the um if the if the core attributes are defined in an interface and then any of the um access any set of extensions can actually extend that 
interface. So the implementation type extends the core as well. And then you get, you just add the new getters, but from a user's mm -hmm. perspective, there's a single type that gives you the um, composition. Am I wrong yeah. or is this, is this headed where you guys are going? I, I, I would you guys keep talking about attributes versus extension. I wasn't sure whether you're mixing the two or, or you're trying to. It is different from the point of view of a function. Yeah, remove lot line six. Remove line six? Why would I remove line yeah. six? Because we have individual, I, I think to Scott's point, and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, either remove line six or remove attribute from line six. That's right. I would remove attribute from line six. Okay. Um, elaborate on why. What's the difference? What, why, why does having the word because attribute change anything? Because, because it doesn't really matter for the user. He wants the user just interested in the key value pair. So yep. user says, give me foo. And if I, if I discover that foo is an attribute, I'll give him an attribute. If I discover it's an extension, I'll give him an extension. Oh, okay. I was using the word attribute just mean both in general. Okay. Now I see why you want to remove the word. Okay. And so one, one, one other recommendation was would we be to not use the the base java object type here because the type system is very limited inside of what can be an attribute and an extension you might because want to change some base class that says wow. it has some like awareness of what cloud event types i i, I try to i try to work on that and i try to create a union type but Union type are they, they, they don't really they don't work really well with Java. That's what if you pass. What if this thing's just you can have a you can we yeah. can have a marker interface for that. That's you know. I think typically this would just be a parameterized interface, so it would return t on whatever. Yeah. Uh, but then returning t. That's how the original interface was, and it was super confusing. Yeah, it is. No, two in the line six. <laughs> no, no, uh, return, return T, it, it could be eventually a problem because maybe the user is expecting a type bar. He's uh, doing a dump of the version, the type is not, all, is not the same as before and it gets class cast exception without any reason. So it, yeah. I, I'm, I'm more for giving an object so the user knows that it needs to do the check by itself, doing an instance of. The T will give you an ability if you do know, because T can always be, you can always re re cast it to an object, but if you actually do know the type and you're sure about that, then it'll skip to the casting. So uh, that's... Yeah, this is, it's, more, uh, it's more a defensive thing towards the user. So the user can't fail, can make it wrong. We, we, um, have, uh, we, use, we use it in another, uh, I use it in another project to return things from a generic map like that using get and returning t and most of the issues mm. that people open are about that. So I'm more but, for keeping object or having a, just an extension of object. So well, let, 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 okay, let, let, um, hopefully I won't completely break everything, but let's hold that discussion just for a second because I want to make sure I get something else right here first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this right, get attributes? Because I, I, I'm, 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 Okay, not being a Java guy anymore. I'm, I'm fascinated that this one is generic. It can go, go over spec to find attributes as well as extensions, but then we split them out here. And I'm wondering, would we not uh, offer up a, a one I, that gets I, everything all at once? I think the Scott's point is more of a, how like, if I look at the cloud event and I read the spec and there's, a, there's a, a explicit points about extensions and attributes and I can see them and I can retrieve them as such, but then, as a convenience uh, for developer, you have additional sort of getters, like the one on line six, for example, that will allow you to, we can, Java doc will specify that it will actually give you either one, right? So it's more, it's like we need to, line five and line three, in my opinion, corresponds directly to the specification. Line six is an icing on the cake. Interesting, because to me, the spec doesn't make a distinction. It, it, has, it, has, it, actually, it has it has well defined it has well defined attributes. I'll, I agree, I agree with that obviously, um, but for the most part, it tries to treat extensions and attributes the same. Well, that's part of the problem, right? Because you don't know the type of an extension. Right. Attributes can are, are known and they have a specific type. Extensions can be any type within the limit of the specification, and they can be. Uh, conflicting types for the same key for different vendors. 
Yeah, yeah not describe that. For example, that's what happened when you serialize to JSON and you read from the other side. If when you serialize to JSON, you add uh, an extension with the time, and on the other side, when you read it, uh, the, the, the deserialization process won't recognize that that's time. So when you, when you read it, you, maybe you're expecting a time, but in fact, you will get a string. Okay, so I, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pull back from actually trying to have an opinion. So, okay, you guys are okay with separating extensions from attributes. Ignoring this question of type versus T, what else is missing here? Or is anything missing? In my opinion, nothing. Uh, this is the what? subset of the interface, right? But yeah, right. I, I think the thing that's missing, and the, I think the thing that would make Slinky happy, I'm putting words in his mouth. Yes, please. There are, we need to take a, just take a pass at making the, the interfaces for each persona that we are trying to target. And the, there's one for the encoders and decoders, and there's one for the consumers. There's probably one for the producers. No objection here. So the producer interface is full of the setter methods, which could be implemented by a builder. The, the accessor methods is what we're, we're talking about right here. I question if git attributes is useful for an end consumer, but I, 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 don't, I don't really have a problem with it. It's really useful for an encoder. So the get extensions and get attributes for an encoder is, uh, makes the job very generic. That's nice. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Doug, line one, uh, singular, not plural. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Slinky, you want to chime in? Uh, can, can you repeat the question? Uh, I'm just wondering. Oh, sorry, Scott, go ahead. Yeah. The, the, the question, okay, so, okay, here's, here's this, then there's another interface that's like cloud event writer or, or, or something. And then there's another one that's like cloud event. In oh, okay, yeah, uh, that's what I made, that's what I, that's what I made in my proposal. I called it visitor visitable, but it's, it's really the same thing. Right, but uh, um, you also extend it. You have yes. cloud event yes. extend from, so you basically, yes. that essentially means that all those methods are now part of cloud events, of so that kind of yes, of purpose. course, and and there is a specific reason. I don't want to have, um, I don't want that an, a third party implementer of cloud event eventually implements wrongly the cloud event interface. For example, not implementing cloud event visitable, which is the proposal that I made, and in that case. Uh, the SDK needs to perform some copying, needs to perform some expensive operations for writing out the message. So um, but, what I'm trying to say is that I want to be defensive in that sense and ask to the third party implementer to implement the cloud event visit method. Of course, I, but, I propose, of course, uh, what I propose in the PR, and I think uh, you people already look at it, uh, is that I, I'm giving uh, a default implementation for this visit process. So who implements the third party implementer for the cloud event uh, interface don't, don't need to care at all about that because it's already given to you by the, but, um, the cloud event SDK. These implementations, the problem with bringing this implementation, whether I want it or not, is that sooner or later, they bring additional obstruction, additional dependencies on the class path and so on and so forth. Where all I care about, and we already discussed it sort of uh, many times over that I may just care, I may only care about cloud event type for inner process uh, communication between methods, between operations and so on. So yes, you can, we can have a visitor, we can have many different specializations as Scott sort of points out right now, but it's the implementation that should say, okay, cloud event implementation ex implements cloud event, cloud event access or cloud event visitor, cloud event this, cloud event that. That's fine, that's perfectly fine. But when the core interface extends from another interface, it's as if the core interface and that other interface are the same thing, are merged into one. So in other words, there is really no, no reason to break them apart if the core interface extended because every time I, deal with cloud event interface, I'm also dealing with that other interface. I, agree. I don't see, I don't see the additional dependencies. 
I well, don't see the additional dependencies. It's, it's the, the requirement for the implementation to implement the entire buffet of interfaces versus oh, just. Oh, yes, the, of course, of course. But I, uh, that's uh, what I said is that I provide default implementation. So who implements that doesn't need to care about that because the, I already well, implement that. That means that it's an abstract base class, not an interface. Yeah. No, no, exactly. no. It's an interface. Exactly. Not an interface. No, well, I, I think that, Java... I mean, implement, it's the default implementation of methods in a, in a Java interface. The way I look at this, this the simplest implementation, the, the simplest use case should be met by the, by the bottom most layer. And the simplest use case, I think, is uh, a function that's receiving a cloud event and calling getters and nothing else. And, and so the core interface should only meet that need. And then builders and encoders and any visitor can be layered on top of that for other types of use cases. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's how I've traditionally done Java too. Right, like you, you spend a lot of effort making these uh, cloud event writers and readers, and then you make the reader writer encoder builder factory implement all those interfaces. Yeah, you can compose them together into an implementation uh, so that you still have that convenience for that user. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. if I understand this correctly, the, the sticking point is whether uh, cloud event extends event writer or whether event writer builds upon cloud event. Event right? reader, event reader. Event reader. Um, reader. I think what we, at least from what I hear from Mark and Scott is that implementation, any given implementation within SDK, outside of SDK, can choose to implement three, four, five, 10, 20 different interfaces. That's up to the implementation, but the interfaces, uh, kind of to Mark's point, um, should give me the simplest thing possible. And if I'm only interested in receiving like a function, cloud event to cloud event, receiving cloud event, acting on it and then returning it or returning, you know, then I'll just, I should be able to, only deal with that interface and no additional baggage that it may bring me. That's right. I, and then, I, then I have take a... it out, right? Like you can make a generator yeah. that makes cloud events for testing and yeah. it just implements the reader or yeah. whatever. I mean, testing again, I don't mean to like kind of don't even want to get in that direction, but yes, it's, it's really like for my, for me different other purposes. It's, uh, okay. Yeah. So, so hold uh, on a second. I, I, I thinking, I, go I, ahead. Yeah. I, I have just a question for you. What should the SDK does? What should the SDK do? Sorry. What should the SDK <laughs> do when uh, I need a cloud event reader? But because, for example, I need to implement an event format and impl I need to implement a protocol binding. But the cloud event that you provide to me doesn't implement the cloud event reader. It doesn't have to. You can have. We, we're not against readers. And what we're saying about cloud event reader and writer interfaces, this is just our, us debating right now. We, there, it's, it's a separate discussion about, and we like uh, in, a, in, a, in a proposal that uh, outlined in a less comment on the PR, we kind of uh, eluded what, what it could be because we already have builders. We can extend upon that. We already have uh, the concept of encoders. We can expand on that. So in other words, there are, just like in Java, we have input readers, input writers. There are separate the strategies. There are separate interfaces. There are separate um, classes out there. So, and for different, pro providing you with the different reading and writing strategies for input streams, for files, for this, for that. So the same thing here, we don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel. So you give me data and now I have a whole toolbox which allows me to deal with this data, either trans convert it from one representation to another, write it to a file, send it over socket, do all kinds of different things. That has nothing to do with the piece of data itself. Sorry, but I don't understand your question, yeah, your answer. I mean, what, yeah, I, need, I need, let's say I need to implement um, an event format, okay? I expect by the interface, a cloud event reader, because I need something that allows me to access us uh, in a structured manner to the event with less overhead possible. So I, 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 expect, I, expect, I expect a reader, okay? Uh, mm. If you provide me a cloud event implementation, which doesn't implement cloud event reader, what should the SDK do? It, it blows up. Yes, it's exactly. Not and, that's, and, that, and that's exactly my whole point. 
I don't want to create this behavior. I don't want to have this. That's why I'm saying, why does in my it opinion, have... Cloud Event Reader should be in the Cloud Event interface. But you why use... does it have to... Oh, go ahead, Scott, I'm sorry. You use these interfaces to separate the concerns inside of the implementation. So if, if that function is that, that's consuming the, the Cloud Event, is, it's, only, it's only asking to be a Cloud Event Reader. Maybe, maybe the problem is that the interface Cloud Event is, is untrue, and there's an, only an implementation that's called Cloud Event, and it implements reader and writer, possibly, right? Um, that function only expects to ever read, and it's not gonna take the, the object that it got and then pass it to the um, some sort of mutating function, because it didn't ask to do that. But also, yes. I'm still struggling to understand. I have an object representing a data, reading, writing, transforming, converting, is a whole separate concern. Just like we have in pure Java, we have a, a data and we're writing it to a file. So I'm going to go and grab a, a input stream writer or input stream reader and so on and, and deal with that. So why I don't expect the file to sort of write or read itself. Um, why should I expect, maybe I'm missing something bigger here, but why cloud event all of a sudden must have a reader. Cloud event represents the event. And it contains accessors for all the attributes for me to literally make anything out of it, to convert it, to transform it into any kind of representational form I can possibly do. I think what you are really missing is the bigger picture that we want to create. And we want to uh, we want to have the SDK working pretty well and pretty glued together. So we want to make sure that uh, whatever implementation of cloud event works with protocol bindings and with even formats. But I think, so, I mean, you, you're saying implementation of cloud event, and when you talk about the implementation, it can implement more than one. No, interface. whatever, whatever implementation, because uh, I, you came here exactly because you wanted to re-implement uh, re the cloud event impl uh, interface uh, in another package, which is fine. So what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say to you is, okay, that's, that's good, but we need to make sure that whatever implementation you create works well with the other parts of the SDK. Otherwise, we are creating, we are potentially introducing a bad behavior, something that can blow up. Can, can I ask a stupid question? <clears throat> you guys were talking about something blowing up and I'm, 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 I'm having trouble understanding why something would blow up. So well, um, it just wouldn't compile, right? Like it's just not, that wouldn't happen. No, well, worse, well, that's worse. But, but, it, 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 could, but, it could even uh, broke at uh, the runtime. But I want to make sure I understand it, it. Something would blow up because, well, Scott, you mentioned compile time, and I think I, that's the one that uh, that's yeah. jumped out at me first, right? If I am writing code that just talks to a cloud event, okay, all I know is the interface, or all I see is that interface on line one through nine, and I have a a, a class file that goes along with that that knows how to process that that structure. If I if my code wants to then do some additional processing on top of that with you guys calling the readers and writers, then first of all, yes, my code needs to import the proper library, right? To, to have that the new functionality or that new interface defined. So that needs to be in my class path right there at compile time. And then at runtime, I need to make sure that I have the right jar file that has that class for that interface defined. Do I have that right? Uh, somewhat, yes. Yeah, okay, so, so it would only fail either compile time or runtime if I'm missing the jar file that, that has cloud event reader or writer defined, correct? Oh, no, 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 no. Think, fail at runtime if you try to like force the cast from an interface that's a reader into yes. the writer. And I don't think you should do that. Yes, that's, that's, where, that's where the problem is, is that uh, if we don't force the cloud event implementer to have such a reader, uh, you are basically blowing up the possibility to use the protocol bindings and even formats for that, for that interface. That's, um, well, let me give you a quick um, example. So first of all, you can force user, um, so first of all, it's again, it's a very common pattern to uh, change representation of one thing to another. Um, and uh, if I have a method uh, that takes, uh, for example, cloud event writer, and all I have is the um, reference to uh, cloud event itself, which is which may or may not be a writer. 
there are patterns and there are utility classes that allows us to uh, actually say, listen, let me convert this if necessary, or if it's already a cloud event writer, then I'm going to give you exactly what it is. In other words, basically be a little more defensive as you uh, as you use, right? So that's point number one. So in other words, just be, uh, yeah, okay. So, but just because, uh, so that's point number one. Point number two, you're talking about protocol bindings. Here's another example. So while, uh, as like for example, we currently have um, uh, quite a number of bindings already. We had them for a number of years, for Kafka, for Rabbit, for so on, for, for other, many different things, right? So for example, within a particular scope of, let's say, Spring Cloud Stream, I want to write Cloud Event to Kafka. Uh, I already have bindings. I don't have to write a single line of code for that, right? So for me, it's just a matter of converting it to a proper binding representation. So in other words, there's still going to be some custom within framework, within application code that would that need to operate on that cloud event and maybe come up with a custom structures and so on and so forth. But it's the core, it's this origin of the representational object, which is at the heart of the entire effort, which is cloud event, which is what we're simply, simply saying that should be simple. So any of these possible combinations that evolve through typical enterprise development are not just possible, but also simple to achieve. Slinky, before I go to you, since your hands up next, just want to make sure: is this actually correct? Should it say extends cloud event? No, 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 no. It's uh, no cloud. A cloud event is not writable. It's cloud event builder that is writable. So uh, <laughs> it's cloud event. It's cloud event that extends cloud event reader. I, which I, which might be I called it visitable, but it's. I think that's that's the point of contention, though, right? Yes. That's a huge yes. point of contention. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, first point one. Uh, okay. I would say that that's what you did in your PR, and you did it with a huge and pretty bad copy, honestly, because that's really where the problem is. Is that if you don't, uh, if the implementation doesn't support Cloud Event Reader, then you need to copy the data somewhere. This is potentially a huge uh, waste of memory. Copy. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's. You, you, you want to challenge me? Let's challenge me on actual facts. So, yes, yes, which copy? Fact. Which copy? Which copy memory we're we talking about? Because yeah, I okay. literally copied your methods and I'm put them in a different class. Extract, I'm talking about extract attributes. At least that's the last time that I saw your PR. Extract and attributes. Yes, yes, in the cloud event. Which? Wh what memory? Okay. Okay. But uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, don't want to get into shouting match, but uh, anyway, um, Doc, I'll let you run the show. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, it seems to me that we're back to, or, or we're, we're focused on one particular question, right? Does, does the cloud event itself uh, extend something like a reader or a writer, or does writer, reader and writer extend cloud event? Do I have that right? It's cloud event that should extend cloud event reader. I understand that's, I think that's your position. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Pivotal, you're saying the exact opposite, correct? Correct. Okay. It, <laughs> how do we resolve this? Because it seems like there's a completely opposite, but it also sounds like technically they're both valid, but I, but it sounds like there are two, two very different ways of using Java. I would, I would actually drop the cloud event interface and oh. have it just be the reader and the writer. <laughs> and so what, make this a class? <laughs> yeah, the, well, if you want to have a, re writer, uh, a readable, writable cloud event object, it's, it would be a class that implements the reader and the writer. So you're, so you're saying that cloud event impl, sorry, that let me think about that. So you're saying that cloud event impl should have cloud event reader, which contains the visitor, and then it implements cloud event attributes, which contains the getter for the typed attributes, and then it contains and then it implements uh, get extensions. That's that's yeah. what you're yeah that's and what you're saying, Scott. I, well, so my interpretation is that uh, people tend to want to think about cloud event as cloud event writer. Or reader interface, and because of like the common use case is going to be the 
the function that gets invoked and it wants to get passed down a cloud event, right? So we wanna make people feel comfortable about that. But what we actually call that thing is cloud event reader because it has all the accessors. That could be a oh, wait, so you are of sorry, So you are saying, owners. sorry, so you are saying to rename cloud event to cloud event reader? Well, well, I'm, I'm saying to make it clear for us in this discussion, I think that's what it's called. Right, the, the, the projection. Yeah, call it okay, okay. Access, this... Accessor and the uh, modifiers, uh, cloud event accessor. I mean, that's just the. Well, well, whatever the, the uh, yeah. idiomatic Java term for that, that is. Mutator. Well, there's an interface that's full of the getters, and there's an interface that's full of the setters. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more common that the, the core interface is the getters. And mm -hmm. except in special cases where you're defining an interface for something like a factory, right? That then you may have setters, but typically getters are on the interface and then there's a builder uh, that generates instances that implement that interface. And that's where you have right at this. Yeah. If, and if I were designing this, I would probably, I would call that cloud events interface here, what it is, except I might cherry pick out the get attributes map and put it in the cloud event builder interface and have that potentially extend the cloud event interface or something like that. Like cool. trim but cloud events down to the, the minimum set that we think a function would use to interact with the cloud event mm -hmm. in a read only fashion. But I wish that yeah. was the only thing we were arguing about because <laughs> If, if, if get attributes is only typically going to be used by uh, an encoder and not by a function uh, that's handling a cloud event, then yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, pro problem is that I think, I mean, it's, it's not I think, is that more something that we try is that having some, uh, using get attributes, uh, it, it could be potentially uh, more costly because you are going, you are gonna allocate a map on the odd path, which is something we, we can easily avoid using the visitor pattern. So, Again, uh, uh, what, what I'm saying is that we should try to see this interface also from, from the perspective of implementing protocol bindings and even formats. So, Scott, I'm, I want to make sure I understand something. Did you, are you suggesting to moving line seven and moving it to the cloud event builder interface? Or the cloud event read, uh, re reader interface. Interesting. Right, so like in my mind, the cloud event reader interface, no, that's the builder. Oh, sorry. The cloud event reader interface is, is it probably also has the get extensions as the map. Maybe a, maybe a copy of that. I, I, I agree with you, Scott, but it almost also feels like giving the time that we are discussing something that we could probably agree in the next five minutes without any issues, but the issue that we can't agree on, we... Yeah, it's, it still seems like the question is, it, is that the word extends right here? <laughs> or is it up here? That's still the basic question, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think, I mean, in this case, the uh, if the reader is for the encoder, it doesn't need the direct accessors. Right, because we can iterate over everything with these two maps. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, that's arguable for what uh, for what regards the um, uh, for, for for the spec version. Uh, sorry, um, it could be useful to access directly to the spec version for what regards implementing the event formats. For example, when you when you are implementing uh, the event format for JSON, you want to know the spec version because you need. Um, but at this point, the thing's already parsed. Yeah. So, I, I think I think that the heart of this argument is that we need to define the these minimum interfaces, mm -hmm. key, all the way down to the very very minimum that it needs to for each persona to use. Though then the the implementations can require that whatever object you pass in implements several of the interfaces that we've defined at the base so that it can do its job. And then everything gets type safety and everything compiles and everything's happy and everything interoperates. 
as long as Correct. it has the assembly of the interfaces that it requires. Correct. I, I think, can we move forward with that? Francesco? Uh, what, what, what I'm really trying to understand till one hour is uh, what is wrong with having a visitor pattern here? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because I still didn't receive that clear answer to that. I, I think the, the, the thing that's wrong with it is that it forces every implementation to also implement the visitor pattern. It doesn't. Again, I, I, if you provided the fault implementation, it doesn't. But you, the thing is that, that, that you, don't get, you don't get a default implementation with an interface. And the, yes, the key yes. here is that. No, 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 no. I mean, you do, but you, yeah, you, you, you use the default keyword. Class, but that's. No, you use the default keyword. I mean, I, sh uh, uh, I showed that in my PR that you, uh, you don't need to provide an abstract class. You effectively provided an abstract class, which is yeah through the default. So that's uh, that's uh, one of those things that uh, gets uh, sort of abused a lot after Java eight introduced it. Well, but, this is a, this is a matter of opinions, really. No, but <laughs> because, uh, the, the, it's the not. Point it's is, really. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. So to, to Scott's point is, I mean, this is the one that we should concentrate. It's not about what's wrong with the visitor pattern. It's really more about the much higher point, which is. Uh, we have personas, we have flavors, right? And I only care about cloud event, just the view of it, or I, or he, he only cares about how to read or write with cloud events. So in other words, we, this is again, a very uh, idiomatic and a very common um, approach in Java to look at the same thing through different type of glasses. So um, it's not a matter of opinion, it's just uh, sort of how things are done and being done. So why do we have to deviate uh, from something that is so basic and so fundamental? I'm in, not deviating uh, anywhere. I mean, visitor is the most Java idiomatic thing you can find everywhere. But, but I think that visitors, <laughs> and, we, and we also and have an interface that provides the, what, what's required to make the visitor pattern work. But that's, that's a separate concern from all the other interfaces that, that are- Absolutely. In Absolutely. All right. So like that, that lets us get, get you what you want and also let any other implementer also implement what they need. Exactly. And then it's really a matter of layering, right? Like yeah. the layers need to be in the right order. Yes. This, it's, this doesn't preclude a visitor. It's just establishing the, the layer upon which the visitor sits. This mm -hmm. is the heart of how dependency injection works because if you want to inject something that implements a certain, uh, certain interface, it really needs to be scoped down to exactly what you want it to do. And then many, many implementations of that interface can get injected. Okay. I, so I, okay. <clears throat> We're almost out of time. Um, I'd like to make a recommendation here. I think a lot of good things have been said. I think we actually did make some progress, some, not a whole lot, but some. Would people be willing to have another phone call? I know I'm going to forgive me for, to the Europe friends um, tomorrow, if not Monday. I know that screws over the U.S. guys, but you're going to screw over the Europe guys today. We should probably screw over the U.S. guys at some point too. Because um, I, I, would, I would like to keep the conversation going if we can. I don't want to sit on this for another week or try to do it through GitHub issue comments. I don't think that's the great use of time. Would people be willing to have another phone call tomorrow? Um, I personally would have no problem, but um, as long as, um, I mean, we should probably start, and you've done a pretty amazing job already, but we should probably start uh, setting really uh, strict parameters because um, we, seem to um, agree on like, like again, the three of us who commented, but um, you know, Francesco keeps, keeps insisting on a specific um, sort of approach and uh, uh, we need to, we need to kind of move on. Otherwise we're gonna be uh, like answering the questions, what's wrong with visitors pattern where it's not, the question of a visitor pattern and there's nothing wrong with it. It's really the question of 
do we agree that the interfaces should be idiomatic, simple, and layered, as we all seem to be talking about the same thing? So if yes, then it really is not about visitor pattern or builder pattern or whatever, but rather about, okay, we have uh, access or interface, which is the most idiomatic, the most simple, and the most representational of the cloud event as defined by the spec. And then we have other, um, uh, the word escapes me, but other sort of flavors that are specific to, and I'm going to use Scott's word, personas, that, uh, and if you cannot produce that particular interface, then that's your problem, right? But, it, you know, don't bring me any kind of default that might bite me in the long run because that's not, because that might bring some other dependency that I may not be interested in. No, so. I, I think I understand. So, I, sorry, I, sorry, sorry, the, the, uh, how, the, how the default brings in your dependencies in? Because default contains code. Code relies on APIs. APIs uh, evolve and, and with that evolution that could depend, to bring a jar that I may conflict with the jar that I have. Can I ask if you looked at my proposal for complete, like looking at the default code, because the default code doesn't rely at all on any downstream implementation. It relies only on the code. I have looked and all I'm saying, again, what, what, why you're, are you're insisting why are you? on that. No, no, wait, 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 okay. So, <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'd, like, I'd like both sides to, to have some time to, to cool off and, and think some more about this. But I, I think the problem is, is kind of what you, what you said there in terms of, okay, are we gonna have sort of the, a layered approach or is there gonna be a default implementation of reader for lack of a better phrase? And I think that's the, the root of it. I'd like to continue the discussion tomorrow. Are you guys available at the same time tomorrow, noon Eastern? Uh, I can't. What about uh, before can that? Can we do it on Monday? Because I can't tomorrow. Scott, could, could you make Monday? I know it's a vacation for us, but could you do Monday? Well, well I was thinking about, uh, you know, going somewhere, but... Oh, Scott, come on. This is far, far more important than having fun. <laughs> it turns out that everything's closed and on fire, so it's fine. Okay. okay. So noon Monday. Can people do that? Uh, noon Eastern Monday, sorry. Same time as the, same time as the normal cloud events call. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, so let, 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 let's reconvene. Um, I'm sure there'll be many background discussions going on between now and then, but <laughs> let's, let's reconvene on Monday and see if we've made any progress in terms of our thinking. Okay? All right. Okay, we'll thank see. you guys very much. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.